We are going to take a look at the Public Ethereum Tether service. This is a very, very novel service that Kaleido has created that provides enhanced immutability. Uh, it counters against retroactive collusion and potential historical rewrites that are more susceptible in smaller private permissioned blockchain implementations. And it works by taking synchronized state snapshots that all of the nodes have agreed upon, designated via a block number and a corresponding block hash. And all of the nodes are going to sign this object with their private key material. And those signed objects are going to get aggregated into a single transaction. And that transaction is going to get pinned or sent up to one of these public Ethereum networks. You have the Ethereum mainnet, which uses the computationally heavy proof-of-work consensus algorithm, and optionally you have the Rinkeby testnet, which is convenient for testing purposes where free ethers can be acquired. So let's take a look at how this actually works in the scope of Kaleido. So I have a Geth POA environment running with three nodes up and cooking, and now we want to go ahead and provision the public tether service. So we can click our drop-down menu and click Add Services and browse through the catalog until we see the public Ethereum tether. So we can click Add. We can optionally apply a name or we can use the default auto-generated name. Click Add. Go ahead and click Done. And the service will take a few seconds to come up. And when the service is active, we can go ahead and access it and go through with our first uh, pinning transaction. So the service has started. We can click the drop down and click view dashboard to get into the service. So the first thing that needs to happen is an, an address, an account needs to be generated. And this is the account that's going to hold the ether and actually fund the transactions, uh, pay for transactions going to the mainnet or to the Rinkeby testnet. So we can generate an account and we're going to have the private key that corresponds to that address. And this is ultimately what will be used to sign those transactions. This private key is immensely important. This is the only way that the Ethereum can be withdrawn from the account. So if you want to fund a public Tether account and then you want to withdraw those funds, you're going to need possession of this private key. Um, so you should treat this the same way you treat any regular cryptocurrency wallet. Um, use hardware, use cold storage, use redundancy, multiple copies, etc. So copy this, store this somewhere safely, um, take very special care of it. So we can click submit and we have our address generated and we see we have a balance of zero ether. Now we decide which network we want to target. We can choose between RinkB and we can choose between the mainnet. Uh, we'll do RinkB in this demo since we don't want to use real ether. And now we need to fund this address on the RinkB network. So we see our account address here and I'm going to leverage MetaMask, um, the browser wallet. This is, this is very convenient, very secure, very intuitive way um, to manage different accounts, um, sign transactions and send ether. So we can copy this address and we can access MetaMask. Now I have an account on the Rinkby testnet that has 4.19 Ether in it. And what I want to do is I want to use this account to fund my public Ethereum Tether account. So we can click send, we can paste our Tether address in here, and we can choose some arbitrary uh, value, an arbitrary denomination. Let's say 50 US dollars, 0.48 Ether. So we can click next, confirm that, and we'll receive back a confirmation once that block is minted and the transaction receipt comes back to the browser. Uh, this typically takes 10 to, to 15 seconds on average. And when this confirms, we'll be able to refresh the account and we should see a balance of 0.480303 ETH. So we see that it's been confirmed. We can come back to our Tether service. We can refresh the account and we see that allocation of Ether. Great. Okay, now we need to deploy the contract onto the RinkB test network, and we can call this the Tether smart contract. This is the, the smart contract that's going to hold those signed state proofs. This is the guy we're going to target with those transactions that, tr that take those aggregated uh, signed snapshots. So we can deploy this contract, 
and again this will take roughly 10 to 15 seconds average transaction time um, on the test net uh, we need the block to be minted and we need the receipt to come back awesome now we want to set the interval and this is the pinning frequency so we can use 1, 6, 12, or 24 hours these are uh, these are the intervals that are exposed via the Kaleido user interface. Uh, if you need more sort of granular representations of the intervals, you can leverage the Kaleido API um, and you can, you can specify your own, your own interval uh, with one hour being the lowest. So we'll pin once every one hour and we can click activate. We see our smart contract address. So by clicking activate, this will actually kick off the first pin. So this will take whatever block number we're at and the, the underlying block hash and all of the nodes in my environment, all three nodes are gonna sign over that. That's gonna get aggregated and pushed up as a transaction. So we click activate and we see a handful of interesting information here. We see that the last successful timestamp is right now. It's 12.25 Eastern Time. And we see that the deployment of the smart contract actually resulted in about 0.0013 Ether um, being consumed. So now if we click Refresh, we should see our first pinned interval, uh, our first aggregated signed state snapshot. Uh, and we do. We see that the last transaction price has lowered and this is, this is that aggregated object that's been signed by all three nodes. Awesome. So now what we want to do is we want to actually download one of these state proofs and we want to ensure that our node actually signed it. And we're going to do this with some elliptical curve cryptographic recovery maths. So we can download a report and this will basically be a collection of JSON objects containing each state proof from our nodes. So we can format this selection, make it a little prettier, and essentially we see um, the signed state proof objects, one for each node. So here we have node one, here we have node two, and here we have node three. And what we wanna do now is we wanna actually do that sort of reverse recovery and make sure that passing in this digital signature um, that was signed or created by a hash of this, this data right here, that that's ultimately going to result in the public address, the public key uh, for our node. And we can do that in the Kaleido console. So if we go back to our environment and we click the details for our first node, we see the node ID up here, and then down at the bottom we see the node ID hash and the node signing address and the corresponding private key to this signing address um, is what was used to sign that hashed object, right? The node ID, the node hash, block number, um, block hash. And this is what we want to recreate right here. Uh, the node ID hash is a SHA-256 hash of the 10 character node ID right here. Um, we could recreate that in our terminal if we wanted to. Uh, we just echo that value and pipe it to a SHA algorithm 256 bit. And we see 61D70 blah, blah, blah. And we go down here and we look at the node ID hash, we see 61D70 blah, blah, blah. So we can prove that that truly is a SHA 256 hash um, of that 10 character string. Uh, and so lastly, what we wanna do is we wanna try to derive this using the cryptographic recovery maths. Um, so we can upload the report details and see if we can recreate um, this user account or this address. So let's go back to our report, our report and grab the pertinent information. So we see the block number is 329 right here. We can put that in. We see that the block hash is this string. Scroll down. Uh, v, R, and S are the essentially the three pieces of an elliptical curve digital signature. Uh, v is used as a recovery ID, and this helps expedite and provide accuracy for that derivation math. Uh, and you're going to see 27 or 28 as a value for these, these digital signatures. So we see 27. Let's go ahead and copy the value for R. 
27 R and R and S are the, the normal outputs for a digital signature. So V is the recovery ID, R and S are, are the true pieces of the signature. So paste that here, click verify, and we see that we're able to reverse engineer or cryptographically recover this signing address. So we know that the private key signed over this hash data ultimately resulting in this signature. Uh, and we can proceed to do that for the other reports in our environment and we will see the same results. So that's the public Ethereum tether in a nutshell. We have extensive and robust documentation explaining a, a, a little more granularly how these EC recover maths work, um, how the actual hashed message is, is created, um, and some nuances of, you know, enveloping a message in, in the proper Ethereum format. So hopefully this was a useful demo, and we can't wait for you to use the public tether service.